this meeting to order. Uh, of course, it's the uh, meeting of the Subdivision and Development Appeal Board. And I'm Greg Birch. I'm the vice chair, but the, our chairman today is can't make it, so I'm going to chair the meeting. Uh, and just for the record, especially, I guess, to Mr. Guerra uh, and Mr. Williams, it, it, the idea is to direct your questions ultimately through me, and I'll, I'll move them around as necessary. Uh, and with that, uh, would the board members introduce themselves um, in any sequence you wish? Rochelle Harding. Adam Dreitzik. Bill Jameson. Harry Scott. Thank you. Um, and the clerk for the meeting is? Jolene Joel Noel. Yeah, Jolene Noel. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, our, so we have the agenda. It's, it's what item on the hearings agenda. Are there any additions, changes, anything from the board in that regard? Hearing none, I'll move the adoption of the agenda uh, for the hearing as circulated. Uh, perhaps if we raise our hands uh, visually, then I'll know. Excellent. Approved. Uh, before introducing uh, the appeal by the developer, sorry, the development officer, I'll ask the administrative people from the town to identify themselves very briefly. I am Jane Dean, permit clerk and uh, meeting administrator for today. Good afternoon, Richard Williams, development officer. Good afternoon, I'm Marcus Henry, supervisor of planning. Good afternoon, I'm Lauren Miller. I'm the manager of planning. Thank you very much. So, uh, so everybody knows. And just for the record, uh, Mr. Williams, can you just tell us what the hearing is? Not, not your presentation of, of it, but just what we're hearing today. The, the, essentially the number of the hearing, et cetera. Absolutely. So it's uh, PL 2020-0328 and it's uh, an application for a uh, um, changing a residential dwelling unit to a tourist home at uh, unit 11410 Second Avenue. Okay, thank you. And with that, I would ask uh, Mr. Guerra, the, I believe you're the appellant. So if you would just uh, identify yourself, I, <laughs> it's probably quite clear. But, uh... Yeah, I'm uh, Gonzalo Garcia Guerra and uh, I'm the owner of the, of the condo in question. Okay. I don't know if you need any more details about Just, myself. I have one question. You've heard who the board members are. And for the record, do you have any objections to any of the board members hearing this appeal? No, not at all. Okay, thank you. And did you receive a copy of the appeal material? Yes, I did from Jolene, yes. Excellent, thank you. Uh, with that, I'll talk about the hearing process. And I'm gonna read this so I don't fall off the the, uh, the uh, agenda. So the first item will be that the administration will make a presentation about the decision that's been made. Then uh, the appellant, Mr. Guerra, you'll be able to speak in favor of your appeal. Following that, I'll ask for those who are in support of the appeal to speak. And then after that, there'll be a question of those in opposition to the appeal and hence in favor of the development officer's decision. With each of those, I'll also ask if there's any um, written submissions in the either category. And then finally, I'll ask if there are any people who might want to speak in a neutral position, neither in, in favor nor opposed to the appeal. Uh, during everybody's presentation, the board members may ask questions of you. So uh, you should be prepared for the, the questions. They'll, they'll come at the end of your presentation. Uh, after we've heard from everybody, I will check with the board just to make sure if everybody's comf comfortable with proceeding or if there's a need for a recess or anything of that nature. And uh, following that, uh, then we'll ask for final closing statements, both from Mr. Guerra, the, the appellant, and from Mr. Williams, the development officer. Uh, we'll close the hearing after we've heard from everybody and the board is satisfied with what they've heard. Uh, 
and just for the record, so everybody knows the, the process is that we have 15 days to make our decision. And so we will, we typically adjourn uh, that open public hearing and then we go in camera and discuss what we've just heard and try to make our decision as quickly as possible. But the notification, uh, according to the Municipal Government Act, must come out within 15 days of the hearing. So that's our timeline. Uh, and then finally, I guess, if, if anybody's using a presentation in these uh, um, Zoom days, I guess, sharing your screen, but if you could email that presentation afterwards to Jolene, uh, that would be appreciated. Uh, it will become part of the, the record. We, we keep a, a written record as well. Um, is everybody all right with that? If I don't see any objections, I'm looking at everybody's pictures. You, you can raise your hand at any time, anybody, uh, either electronically or, or physically, and I'll try to keep a, an eye on the screen. Uh, and then, of course, I'll call once in a while just to make sure everybody's okay with where we are. But with that, I will ask Mr. Williams to proceed with the presentation regarding the appeal and the uh, the development officer's decision. Yes, good afternoon, uh, Subdivision Development Appeal Board. Uh, as I stated before, my name is Richard and I'll today I'll be providing an overview of the application to change a residential dwelling unit to a tourist home at Unit 1, 1410 Second Ave. Uh, the application was received on October the 2nd. Uh, I noticed a decision was provided on October the 29th. Uh, the appeal was submitted on November the 16th. Um, submitted <coughs> letters out to the immediate neighbours on November the 26th. It was advertised in the paper on December 10th and today is December 15th. And we believe that the statutory requirements uh, have been uh, complied with and can proceed with the hearing today. Just to give you an understanding of the location, uh, the site in question is located within the red box. It's uh, Front Second Avenue, uh, just across the road is Bow Valley Trail, and you've got Cam Hospital um, just to the right there. Um, the next slide there, Marcus. And just a little bit closer here, uh, so you'll see Second Avenue um, immediately in front of the site, shown in red, um, Bow Valley Trail, and. 13th Street, just a couple of properties down. And here's just a site plan because the townhouse was just under construction under those aerial views. And you'll note that unit one is just facing Second Avenue there. And here it is um, just from the street. Um, unit one is just on the left there. And looking uh, north, I believe. Uh, this is just the view, um, uh, the streetscape. And then looking south is the next one. Uh, again, uh, the streetscape. And one more is across the road towards Three Sisters. And um, that's, I believe, Ramada across the road. And here's the application. So um, the application applied to change the constructed um, dwelling unit to a tourist home. Uh, it's a four unit townhouse, um, notably three of the existing units within the development converted to tourist homes in August uh, this year. And that was under a previous uh, land use bylaw. Um, and to note is the lot area of the site is 613, which becomes relevant um, in relation to the land use bylaw. And so the site itself is located within TP Town, uh, comprehensive redevelopment district, uh, Area C, uh, which is a new um, set of regulations and land use bylaw um, requirements, which became into effect on October the 6th, 2020. Um, specifically for this Area C district, uh, this tourist homes is a permitted use, uh, specifically with one regulation stating the maximum density for tourist homes shall be one unit per 570 square meters of lot area. Um, this regulation specifically was adopted by council to ensure that residential buildings on Second Avenue remain available uh, for Kenmore residents. 
And just to give you a bit of a discussion about the specifics of this application is that it was submitted on October 2nd, uh, as I said uh, earlier today. Um, and at that time it required a notice of application to be posted for 10 days, as in the previous land use bylaw, it was a discretionary use. Um, and so that notice was posted and the period would have ended on October the 17th. Um, however, in between that time, the land use bylaw was amended and under section 190 of the Municipal Government Act, it says um, the day that it is signed is the day that it comes into a force or comes into effect. So um, we were required to review this application under the new land use bylaw regulations, which included that maximum tourist home density that I mentioned before. So the maximum density for this property is one. Um, the lot area is 613 square meters and the maximum um, density per, um, per square meter is 570. So it's one point um, something with change. Um, this property already contains three tourist homes approved under a previous land use bylaw. Um, and our understanding is that two of the existing homes are legally non-conforming as they were previously approved, um, but now couldn't, could no longer be approved. Um, so keeping that in mind, the, the density variance that is being asked in this application is 268%, um, just shy of, just shy of 300%. Um, and in the land use bylaw, the development officer is limited to, to a 10% variance on maximum density. And next slide there. And therefore, um, we couldn't approve this application um, because we don't have the power to grant anything more than a 10%. So it was uh, an automatic refusal, as, if you like. And if required, I prepared a schedule A um, standard conditions of approval. Um, should it be required later down the track? And I'm happy to answer any questions um, should the board have any at this time. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Um, board members, uh, I'll go through the list and see if anybody has any questions at this time. Any questions, uh, Adam? Adam? Adam first, and then Rochelle. Is the administration taking a position for or against the PL neutral, apart from conceding that, that it didn't have authority to grant the variance? So, so I guess my understanding is that um, we don't give a recommendation to the board uh, in that regard. And I would just uh, reiterate that uh, it was recently the will of council to change the, um, the regulations in the land use bylaw. They specifically deliberated on this issue and, and um, required this regulation to be uh, placed in the bylaw. So, um, so I would reiterate that, um, that motion of, of council. Follow up? Yes. Uh, can, can you speak to the, uh, the applicable planning uh, document, the area redevelopment plan that you referenced in the staff report? For sure. So um, as part of um, updating the TP Town area, they recently amended the area redevelopment plan. Um, and for uh, this specific area, they were looking at increasing the um, kind of the commercial nature of it. And, and perhaps, um, perhaps Marcus or Lauren will be able to speak to it more um, in more detail. I wasn't specifically involved in that process, but I can bring up my report just as a uh, to refresh. So, so yeah, so the TB Town Area Redevelopment Plan um, was uh, reviewed and came into effect on July the 27th. Um, and specifically around this uh, matter, they received a lot of uh, feedback from um, residents in this, in this area, uh, noting that an increase in tourist homes would displace current residents of Canmore. And so they 
um, motion to put in a maximum tourist home density at third reading uh, of the land use bylaw. And does and I'm happy to hear from anyone on admin, depending who's best positioned. I'd like to know what the plan says about this issue. Mr. Chair, go ahead, Ms. Miller. Thank you. Uh, so the TP Town ARP for this particular area of TP Town was really looking to encourage a mix of uses. Um, which would allow for an opportunity for commercial development, but also want to um, ensure that there is residential development possible within that community. Uh, so we put forward as the administration some recommendations as to regulations that we felt would address uh, that desire to have a mix of development, be mindful of what is currently already developed and in the process of being developed in TP Town and council based on some of the feedback that was received during the public hearing for both the ARP as well as the land use bylaw amendments that subsequently followed, uh, put in this regulation in order to ensure that uh, the residential uh, was not displaced uh, by commercial uses and to continue to ensure that there were viable housing options for all within TP Town. Thank you. Uh... Mr. Druzak, did that answer your question? That's helpful, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Rochelle, I think you had a question. I have a few actually. Um, first is, um, this particular topic is up for discussion with council again, correct? There's a hearing in January on this specific regulation, so there may be future changes again. I believe uh, another uh, council member um, put forward a motion and it will be reconsidered uh, in the new year. Yeah. Um, the regulation, from what I understand, um, they're looking at uh, considering is changing it to a 50% uh, rule. Uh, so if that specifically was um, uh, discussed, it wouldn't materially change this application, um, but uh, anything, could, anything could happen between now and then. Okay. Lauren, Lauren Miller, just, just before you go, Rochelle, Lauren Miller, you wanted to add, I think, to that? Yes, I just wanted to note that that will be going forward to Council uh, January 5th. The public hearing will be held um, on January 5th, and we'll be looking to hear from the public uh, additionally about this particular matter. But uh, what Mr. Williams noted is correct, that uh, with what is being proposed by a member of Council, to address some of the concerns that were raised by this particular regulation uh, would not materially change the impact to this particular property. Okay, um, the next question is, uh, with respect to the two legal non-conforming tourist homes, what happens when those homeowners sell those properties? I assume that the non-conforming use goes away? So the, so when something gets approved in the land use bylaw, it stays with the land or with the property, not with the owner. Uh, so it would be approved in, uh, perpetually, in, in perpetuity. Um, it would only lapse if they gave up the use um, um, and no longer um, chose to run it as a, as a tourist home. Uh, and they wanted to say, um, forego the, the use. It, for this one, it's a little bit challenging, but you can imagine it in a more of a, uh, commercial sense. Um, so if you're running a, um, like a neighborhood pub and that becomes no longer an option in a neighborhood, um, you can continue to run that pub. But if you close down, and I believe it's six months um, in, the, in the MGA, if you um, vacate the use for six months, you can't restart that, that neighborhood pub again. Um, for tourist homes, a little bit different because it's still residential and it's um, underlying uh, classification, um, but it's kind of in between commercial and, and residential. Um, so you can, you can not, you can live in the unit, you can live in the tourist home. Um, and so you're not really using the use, but there's a special mill rate uh, to, to um, a mill rate or tax rate to signify that. Um, so you're, so in this case, once you have it, you, you effectively have it forever. Okay. That was my question. It goes with the title then. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that was it. Thank you. No problem. Mr. Drusick? Yeah, further to that, are, are any of the specific units designated as the two non-conforming? We haven't made that determination. 
um, in terms of um, which ones. Um, it, it is a technical question. Um, I'm not sure what the case law around who gets first dibs. Um, I would I would hazard a guess that it would be the first one approved is the one to stay, but um, but it is a uh, academic I guess discussion around which ones are legal and which one's le the first legal one and which one's legally non-conforming because they can all stay um, forever. Are there any other questions from the board members? No. I have uh, two, just for confirmation, both the land use bylaw and the TP town ARP were amended. Is that correct? Like both documents? Correct. So um, there was a, the AOP, um, July 27th, and then the land use bylaw um, via um, bylaw 2020-15 uh, on October the 6th. Okay. Uh, my second question, with regards to the change made to the land use bylaw, uh, and you showed us on your screen earlier when you were sharing um, that there was, I guess it was section 318.422. So that's a regulation of the bylaw. I just want to make sure that the use listed is still tourist home uh, without, without the restriction in the use. In other words, the, the control, the limit of, of one per X number of square meters, that's in the regulation, not in the use, as I understand it. But I, I'd like confirmation. Yes, that's correct. So tourist home um, is listed as a permitted use. There's no stipulation um, listed within um, that section. It's a regulation further down within the district. Thank you. Any other questions of Mr. Williams? Uh, with that, I guess, um, just make sure. So I will I'll call on Mr. Guerra, if you would speak now, um, you, you get a presentation. If you have something to share, you're welcome to share your screen with us. Thank you so much. No, I, the only thing I had, I have three things to share, but I send them already. I think you guys have received it. Um, one was my letter. Um, yeah. The other one was a letter from the realtor that um, Christopher Vincent that uh, helped us to find the the property in Canmore, and um, and the third one was a letter from the other uh, condo owners within uh, that building. And uh, can I confirm that you guys have received that? And yes, that that was sent in the package. Okay, perfect. So yeah, no, I I just gonna gonna go through the through my letter again uh, actually, um, and I think this is. Uh, a very unfortunate situation that we got caught in between uh, with the best of our intentions. As I said in my letter, we have been going to Canmore uh, for 15 years. Uh, we really love the mountains and enjoyed climbing, hiking, skiing. Um, so we definitely intended to buy a property and we thought about it for many, many years. It's not a decision that we took this year. Um, but uh, we recognize that I work here in Edmonton, that I couldn't be there all the time. Although I see myself as, you know, get a bit older um, and I started, you know, downgrading the amount of work that I do, is spending more time there and eventually all my time there. As it is right now, I'm with a family with seven kids. Um, I can go back and forth all the time. So we definitely, uh, after putting a lot of thought, what I asked um, the realtor and because I knew that Cameron has some specific regulations about short-term rental is I said, well, if I'm going to buy a property that I can be there all the time, I would like to rent it in short term when I'm not there. Okay. Um, I knew, and I have friends that have properties in Canmore. Um, they told me about the, the regulations and the bylaws. So we'll look into those. Uh, we'll look at the regulations. We wanted to be sure that actually we were buying something with the intention of renting it for short term when we were not there, but at the same time meeting the bylaws and the rules that the town of Canmore were putting in place. Um, so that was a discussion that went on and on with the realtor. We, I, I remember like several times just going to see some houses at the beginning. I asked him, just show me things that we can show, uh, do short term rental and show me properties that we can. That will be just for our use. 
And, uh, and many times, you know, my question all the time was, could we use this for short term? Could we don't? And uh, so we went over and over about, you know, what the areas that were allowed and not to do that uh, within Canmore. Um, as we were seeing, uh, you know, properties, we, we realized that probably the best thing for us, again, with a large family to make this affordable um, and also as an investment, it was better just to actually do it in a place that we can do short-term rental. And that's how we came along with this, um, with this uh, unit. Um, so we went to see it, um, uh, the, what we were able to see on the Town of Canmore uh, website and what the realtor uh, was telling us that was uh, an area that I was just approved in the spring for uh, mixed use. So tourist home um, applications were uh, permitted and we could actually apply for them. Um, and also the other three units within the same building, they were already in the process of doing so. Um, so uh, with that on, and I said, okay, this is great. Like we found a good place uh, it is a busy part of the town, right? And um, so that was a disadvantage for our point of view, but we said, well, we, you know, we put that on the scale with being able to actually rent it. And we decided to go ahead with that purchase. And you guys know very well that, you know, properties in Tanmo, in Canmore are not cheap at all. Okay. Um, so we did that. And the, unfortunately, because of the particularities uh, of this year, um, things took way longer. Like we bought in, in July, and, um, but the, we did not get the title until way, way later. It took us months to get the title. And that was just due to the pandemic and how slow the process was during the summer to get all these things. So by the time that we actually got the title and we put our application in place, then we found out, um, Richard sent me an email uh, right after, uh, a few days after saying that actually there was a bylaw change in the regulations that it just came after we actually sent the application in. And I recognize that the application has to be there and we have to put the sign there and it has to be for 10 days. But you know, we, our application was already in. So there was no way for us to know that something that actually got just approved for mixed use in the spring and we bought in the summer and put all the applications and everything as fast as we could, there was no way we could imagine or could find in the town of, uh, of Canmore website that that by law was gonna change and actually that it changed. And even when it came into effect, um, there was nowhere to find that information other from uh, Richard's email. And um, so that came to a big surprise to us. And, um, and I remember even having the conversation with him, it was kind of a race, I said, put your sign right up there right away. Maybe it doesn't come into effect until it gets uh, published. Uh, because again, we couldn't see it anywhere, um, the new uh, regulation. So we got a friend of us, uh, you know, to put that leaves in camera, put the sign right away. But then he gave me an, uh, another call saying, you know what, you know, it actually becomes in effect uh, when they pass it, uh, even if it hasn't been published. So I feel, I understand um, that, you know, I can agree or disagree with the view of maintaining uh, more residential homes in specific areas of Canmore, but I, I recognize the reasons that the, the town of Canmore has, um, and I think they are valid, um, but I think uh, for our particular case, we got caught in between that change, and it seems very unfair that the other three units can actually do uh, short-term rentals, and we can't. Um, if you want to protect um, the, you know, homeowners um, within uh, Canmore, I think who is going to want to buy a unit um, that actually is surrounded by rental units, right? Um, and I think that's how we feel that we got caught in between uh, within our purchase. And, and also um, now we are at huge disadvantage because even if we want to sell it, as um, uh, for residential use, people are gonna see that they're surrounded by rental units, right? The three units surround us. And actually our unit and the one behind us, they kind of overlap on the top floor. So it's a bit more noisier than what a regular home is. So I think um, in our particular case, again, not talking about the general use of TP Town, but in our particular case, I think nobody will want to buy a unit over Second Avenue, which is a busy place to begin with, surrounded by rental units. So we got caught in a unit that now with the change in the bylaw, after we put our application in, 
We won't be allowed to rent, although other than this surface area, the, all the other requirements could be met. And, um, and at the same time, nobody's gonna want to buy it for residential use, just because of how, how it's built and the location that it is and how it's surrounded by the, by the other neighbors. Um, in terms of noise or disturbance to the area, um, again, it's facing Second Avenue with a street that just goes straight into Second Avenue. So I don't think um, having a bit of more movement within our unit uh, is actually really gonna affect um, the, the rest of the neighborhood, which is actually behind us and behind other units that are already being used for rental. Um, again, we're planning to use it a lot for ourselves. Um, and uh, so it's not that it's gonna be rented all the time, um, but of course, you only can take my word for that, right? Uh, but definitely we are, um, I didn't buy it just to rent it and I actually want to enjoy it. Um, but I think it's, we, we, it seems very unfair and it almost feels a bit uh, like as a discrimination that you know, suddenly you, you, you can't use it. You got caught in between the other people can rent and I've been saying no um, without knowing. Like there was no way that I could have known that. And if I, I'm gonna be brutally honest, but if I knew that I could, I was buying a property that it could not rent, I would have bought in any other area. So they're way more quiet for my family than being in over Second Avenue. Okay, I mean, Canmore is all beautiful. I love it. Uh, but I think that's a very, that's a very busy place. Um, and, uh, and obviously I would have uh, chosen a place that is more quiet uh, if I knew that that was the case. I recognize that there was no 100% guarantee when you apply for something that you're gonna get it. But there was no red flags. There was nothing uh, within the building, within the area that is still approved for mixed use. And I even was, as you guys were talking, I was even wondering, well, can I put a business? Maybe I can. Um, and, and so, but that's not my intention, obviously, right? And um, so I'm just begging you to, to reconsider, uh, not just the, the overall, but in this particular case, uh, the fact that we got caught in between. Um, it's, a very, it's a very particular year with a lot of people have suffered already and you know, their business and investments and other things have gone, uh, they have losses. And we don't wanna be one more on those uh, with something that we truly, uh, with all the intentions, we try to follow every single regulation that was available to us. We even inquired with the realtor to make sure they were meeting all things. You probably know that a lot of people that are renting that they're not supposed to be renting. We were wanting to be absolutely sure they were following what it was intended by the town of Canmore and that we were following the rules when we were buying. Uh, but uh, we felt that somebody pulled the rug from under our feet and it suddenly, um, without knowing that this was coming and there was no way to know it, that suddenly um, we put our application, everything is in place, ready, and then we get this notice um, that uh, we couldn't have known from, from before. Um, so I understand the overall view. Uh, and again, we can agree or disagree on that, but I really respect that. Uh, but I think in this particular case, um, if you uh, grant us the permit to use it, I don't think it's gonna negatively affect the neighborhood. And, and I think uh, it will be fair to us um, that when we bought and we apply, even when we put the application in, the uh, regulations and the rules were that we could have used it for short-term rental if it were approved. And there was nothing wrong with the unit itself for not being approved. So um, I, uh, I wanna say thanks a lot for hearing me, uh, for giving me the opportunity to do the appeal. And, um, and I would just ask you, you know, to, to please take that into consideration. Um, that is, I think it's a specific uh, situation and very unfortunate. And again, that if, if, if it was a regular year, um, probably by August, our land title was gonna be in, our application by September was gonna be in approved, right? And it just, everything got significantly delayed. Every single step of buying uh, was significantly delayed, which was not um, uh, obviously because of us, it was from, from uh, external reasons in this very particular year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Guerra. Um, do any of the board members have any questions of, of the appellant? No, I'm seeing none. Uh, 
I have none, Mr. Guerra. I, I think you expressed yourself very well. So uh, we'll move to the next item. And just remember that you have a rebuttal opportunity at the very end. Um, so uh, I guess I'll ask if there's anybody else, and I'm not 100% sure how I can do this, but I can see a, a Dave Williams and a Chase Mullen. Uh, but is anybody else interested in speaking on behalf of the appeal? You mean in support of the appeal? I'm sorry, yeah, in support of the appeal. Thank you. Yeah, so Dave Williams was signed up to speak in support. Okay. If you would like to move forward. Yeah. Mr. Williams, uh, I take it you can hear us. If you'd like to unmute and uh, if you wish to turn on your video, this would be your opportunity to speak in support of the appeal. Well, thank you. Um, Really, I, I'm the owner of uh, 1414, right next door to 1410. And, uh, you know, I think it's been good conversation. And I think the uh, new owner of Unit 1 in 1410 did a good job of summarizing. Uh, there was one point, though, that the bylaw or land use bylaw and the old ARP uh, actually goes back to 2004. Um, and that is when it, tourist homes became a discretionary use. So it's been long standing for that particular block or the old section E that, uh, you know, it was allowed. So I think uh, it is one of those situations that was quite surprising to everyone when the, the new restriction from four down to one came in. It wasn't discussed in the ARP, which uh, uh, the other Mr. Williams identified that indeed that is the case of uh, the ARP. But uh, I certainly, I feel badly that he got caught in, in uh, this situation. And from my perspective, directly next door, you know, we have uh, tourist homes on either side. Uh, now, the other one on uh, 1418 is four units of tourist homes. So really, you know, as you said, if it wasn't for the timing of, uh, of the application, if it had been three or four weeks, uh, we wouldn't be having this hearing. So uh, I, I'm in full support of allowing just simply because he's got caught in this situation, by all means, you know, it would be highly unfair. And um, um, thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, just hang on one second. I'll just ask the board if they have any questions. Board members, uh, do you have any questions of Dave Williams? I'm seeing shaking heads, no. Mr. Williams, I don't have any questions either. So um, you know, just checking again. Yeah, I think we appreciate your input. And if you would just mute yourself again, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, I will ask again if there's anybody else who wishes to speak in support or in favor of the appeal. And I'll ask one more time again uh, uh, if there's if there's anybody who would like to speak, uh, just uh, turn on your audio and tell us you'd like to speak. Uh, seeing none, Jolene, do you have any written material in support of the appeal? I do not. Okay. Uh, th and that, that's additional, Mr. Guerra, to the letter that the realtor sent. We, we do have that in our package. Um, okay. Is there anybody who might want to speak in support of the original development officer's decision, in support of the decision? And notwithstanding our Zoom technology changing the world that we see, I'll ask, as is our custom three times, so is there anybody who wishes to speak in uh, opposition to the appeal? And third time, anybody wishing to speak in opposition to the appeal? And, and Jolene, did we receive any written submissions uh, in opposition to the appeal? We, no, we did not. Okay. So it was, uh, again, following this protocol, uh, 
I'll ask if there's anybody who wishes to speak in a neutral position, uh, neither in support nor in favor, but having something to say about the uh, decision before us. I'll ask the second time. And the third time, nobody interested in speaking in a neutral position? Seeing none, Jolene, did we have any other letters that would fit into this category? I know we did not. Okay. Uh, so we have no other communication at all? No. Okay. Uh, I'll just, going through the agenda, I'll call on the board to consider whether you'd like to recess, to discuss anything more before we hear the closing arguments. Any, any need to go on camera, anything of that nature? Seeing none, I will move to the next item. Uh, and uh, this is to administration who gets the opportunity to speak first. So closing arguments and, and, and information from Mr. Williams, Richard Williams. Yeah, thank you. I, I don't have anything additional to, um, to add. Um, I think it was clear in the presentation and, and the uh, summary from the uh, appellant. Um, but if, uh, yeah, available for any other questions, uh, uh, should you wish. Does the board have any other questions of Richard Williams? I'm not seeing any. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Uh, Mr. Guerra, uh, this would be your opportunity to say anything else that uh, you might wish as a closing argument to answer any questions that you might have heard that uh, have arisen, anything of that nature. Yeah, no, again, just to say thank you for listening to me. Uh, and uh, I also want to say thank you to Richard, actually, uh, because despite being the person who told me no, <laughs> Um, initially that he has refused it. He was very prompt at answering, answering questions, responding whatever doubts I had and explaining what exactly happened. So uh, I think that uh, that was very nice from him. Um, yeah, no, again, just to consider this, that this is a very special situation. I, I have a comment that I, I don't know if this is a place, but I have a comment. Just if you guys, despite what the, what the decision is, and if it, this is going to be reviewed again, and I guess uh, either way, I will be now a part of that uh, neighborhood. Um, that is maybe to consider if you have units like mine, that you have four units in one building, instead of approving one unit and not the other one, so two units and not the other two, maybe approving like the building is more fair and you have buildings that, that can be used for rental and buildings that cannot again because who really wants to you know he might not want to live beside somebody that is renting or just the dynamics of that building might be different um so that's just something to consider if it's just an area that you want to make sure that are for residents maybe just having blocks or having like buildings that are approved for rental or not might be more fair than just having units within the same building but that's just regardless of what the decision is, it's just a comment uh, for whoever is going to make decisions in, the, in this bylaw. Um, but again, thank you for listening to me. And I hope that uh, you, you see my position in favor and uh, you can uh, make an exception for this uh, very particular case. Thank you. Okay. I just uh, thank you for your comments about Mr. R Mr. Richard Williams. Uh, I'm sure he appreciates that. Um, with regards to the comments you made, uh, about how the land use bylaw might be changed in the future. Listening in today are the manager of planning and the supervisor of planning, so they would have heard that, but you're probably best to address your comments to council at the upcoming uh, public hearing. I can't remember the date, but you'll- Yeah, the fifth. yeah I, I took notice of that, yeah, thanks. Yeah, so that would be a very appropriate time to make a submission either verbally in, in much a similar manner is, is being done today or just in, in writing you'd have either choice and then just finally uh in closing we're getting ready to close mr guerra uh, we normally ask at this point do you understand what has happened and do you feel you've had a, a fair hearing yes i believe so okay thank you very much um i'm going to get ready to close this unless there's any comments from the board members um again we have 15 days to make our decision 
we're usually quicker than that, but uh, technically we have 15 days. So you would get a written notification of the decision, uh, typically from Jolene within the 15 days. And with that, I'll move uh, the, the board adjourn this public hearing today. Thank you and Merry Christmas for everybody. Thank you. And to you. Uh, board members vote, uh, show of hands. Okay, I hereby declare the hearing closed. And just for those who are watching the meeting, what will happen next is we'll probably take a quick break, but then we will um, go to our business meeting, uh, which is uh, has its own agenda, separate meeting. Uh, and we typically uh, approve past minutes and, and do a little business of that nature. Uh, you're welcome to watch us do that. Uh, and then after that, we would go in camera and discuss the appeal that we've heard today and see if we could come to a decision. So if you're not interested in seeing the rather mundane uh, uh, passing of minutes and whatnot and the business meeting, you're welcome to leave. Uh, but that's what we will do next. And board members, just um, so the, the hearing's closed formally. Uh, board members, do you want a recess now or would you like to go to the business meeting first? Uh, anybody speak up? I'll take advice. That was a short hearing, so we can keep going. Everybody in concurrence? Okay. Uh, you have. So you don't need me anymore, right? I do not. You're, okay. you're welcome to yes. stay, but we'll we'll do this business, which really is uh, uh, there's an agenda, but it's really uh, I'm just looking at uh, adoption of the minutes of the previous meetings, um, and then um, we'll discuss the refund of the application fee, and that was that would be it basically, and then we'll go in camera. So uh, again, you're welcome to stay, but. Uh, there'll be no discussion anymore of your case in okay. public. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So moving to the Subdivision Development Appeal Board business meeting of December 15th, uh, calling that to order, you board members would have seen the agenda. Uh, could I have a motion? I guess, I guess the protocol is I move it just because it's easier with Zoom. I'll move the adoption of the agenda as approved unless there's a question and and Rochelle uh, I was voting oh. <laughs> okay Rochelle's way ahead everybody in favor raise your hand thank you we've got the agenda approved so now we move to the adoption of the minutes and has anybody got comments we'll, we'll do November 19 the first one on our agenda uh, uh, so if, if anybody, I'm just pulling mine up here. If anybody has any questions, comments about the minutes of the November 19th appeal hearing, please let us just speak up. The second one, uh, there was, and I'm just, now I'm trying to bring We're it up. We're not on the second one yet. Oh, okay. We'll, or, we'll sorry, you mean the second? Um, PL 2020. Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So do the first one first. Yeah. Uh, we'll do the first one first. Thanks. Any any comments on the first one? Uh, I'm, I'm looking for my <laughs> my notes here. Oh, there it is. Uh, yeah. I don't have any significant changes. Um, anybody, anybody else? No. Sorry. Just, um, just for clarity, Jolene, what I would like to suggest is the, in, under the applicant's presentation of the application decision, right now it says the board now asked the process, sorry, the board asked how the process would be while attending this bed and breakfast. And that, if you looked at that, might be just better worded that the board asked how the visitation process would be managed for guests attending this bread and breakfast. That, that would be the only comment I had. 
Sorry, can you say one more time? The board asked yeah, how yeah. the visitation. So it is the, under the applicant's presentation of the application and decision, it's the second line. It, and it would read, the board asked how the visitation process would be managed for guests attending this bed and breakfast. Noted. Thank you. Yeah. Um, is everybody happy these days using themselves and they, et cetera? I, I, I don't, I'm old school, so when I read things, uh, knowing the applicants may I say he, but uh, I know that there's a, because we're not sure of, of things these days, uh, themselves, they, yeah, fine. Everybody okay with that? I am. I'm fine with that. I know it's grammatically incorrect to, to use the plural they when you're referring to a individual, but it just seems like it's simple enough and people know who and what you're referring to. Okay. I, I tend to agree, so I just want to make sure everybody's okay. Um, Anybody else? So we'll move the approval of the first minutes. So this is the first hearing, I suppose. All in favor with the, as amended? Approved. Uh, Harry will move to the second set of hearing minutes. And all it was, the, it, it says she and it should be a he and it's, is it Mr. Baker? I think it was. I'm trying, all of a sudden I can't bring it up and I don't know why. But it's in the the minutes, and I think it's it was it's one of the neighbors. Yeah. Well, yeah. four of his, six. Yeah. yeah. So speaking in opposition to the appeal, I actually saw that one too. Thank you. Noted. Thank you. Anybody else with anything? No. The the only. Suggestion I would have is uh, is spelling meter uh, R E M E T R E as opposed to E R that comes in under administration's presentation of the application and decision uh, right after three hundred square meters. So that's all. Anything else from anybody? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the second set of. Minutes as amended. All in favor? Approved. So now we have the November 19, 2020 business meeting minutes, which are shorter. Any, uh, any items uh, of change there? I, I have none. I'll move approval of a November 19, 2020 business meeting. All in favor? Approved. Do we have, oh yes, we have one other business piece, which is the refund. Normally we ask that question afterwards. Uh, how would the board like to proceed? So this is the question of the refund. Mr. Guerra is asking for a refund. Do you want to I, delay that to later? Do we typically do this in camera? Yeah, uh, you typically go on camera and then talk yeah. about it. And then if you make a decision today, then you can announce it outside of camera or you can postpone it to the next. Okay. Uh, it's up to you guys, but that's typically how we've done it. Do you want to do in camera right now or would you rather wait till the decision is made? Whatever is easiest with Jolene and the, the filming, the recording. It's a long pause for, for to, to stop. I can't stop the recording. I have to pause, the, like put it on the screen. It's actually quite complicated to end it and go back in. I'm going to suggest that we move in camera right now, uh, have a discussion about the applicant's uh, request and see if we can make a decision. Uh, just to avoid what Jolene's saying and then come out of camera and if we haven't been able to make a decision then we proceed and then we'll have to recess the business meeting and then re uh, reassemble. 
uh, or else uh, if we can make the decision, then we'll just close the business meeting. Does that sound okay to everybody? So if that's okay, I would make the motion that we go in camera. And this for anybody who might be monitoring, I expect it would be a short pause that uh, Jolene would manufacture. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna invite yeah. you guys and into then, the breakout room and then Jane will be able to share a screen that sits exactly. there on a break or in camera. Okay, so we'll uh, go in camera. And I guess we join the in-camera meeting. We made it. It was a quick run back to the meeting room. Greg, you're muted. Yeah, there we go. Um, thank you. Uh, so I will call the regular meeting back to order, having come out of in camera session and having discussed the issue of the refund request and based on our in camera discussion i will make the motion that we um, deny the appellant's request that we, we refund the board refund the appeal fee and so i'll make the request that we deny the request would anybody like to speak in terms of this motion. Okay, in that case, I'll ask for a vote on the motion to deny the appeal, or sorry, deny the refund request. Approved. So with that, does anybody have any, uh, that, that being that the, the motion is, uh, approved so the refund is denied. Uh, does anybody have anything else under other business? No. Uh, just for the record, um, Rochelle, just, uh, I'd like just as the, as the chair to thank all of you, but especially Rochelle and Jill, just thanks for, for being such excellent board members. You guys have been phenomenal. I know I'm going to see you in <laughs> in 30 seconds in camera, but I think I'd like to say that publicly as well. It's, it's been a real pleasure working with you. Thanks, Greg. And Thanks with so that, much. I'll ask, I'll move for adjournment. Uh, or sorry, actually, I'll, I'll make the motion for adjournment. Uh, all in favor, we're going in camera to discuss the decision. All in favor, approved. So we'll go in camera and I'll ask first thing if you need a break. <laughs>